Good evening, all, or I guess happy tomorrow uh, for those over on LOCAC and others of you living in the future. And welcome to Calvert's Corner for this episode of Coffee with Cal. I am Baron Calvert of Guiler, painting the Marine Cross, painting the Argent Comet, painting the Compostela, painting the Palmer's Lantern and Reaper, coming to you live from the southwest outpost of the Bearing of Southbounds on the beautiful southern coast of Meridies. Now, today I'm flying solo. And this show is going to be a little different than my usual ranting about a topic. Uh, although today is still a passionate topic for me, it's going to be more of a casual hangout session where I do a little bit of crafting and talk about what's uh, in my boxes. But first, today's show is coffee themed and we have to make sure we honor our beans appropriately. Uh, so for today's coffee, I am drinking a very, and yes, I said coffee. Yes, it's 8 o'clock at night. Do not judge me, Internet. I don't want to hear it. Uh, I have French vanilla from New England Coffee. Uh, and to change it up a little bit, you'll notice a new cup. Uh, I think I've used it once before. Uh, this is my tournament prize cup from Tourney of the Foxes back in 2021, etched by Alex the Scribe. So it's a pretty nice little, little, uh, little plague dude there. So Appreciate the donation of that, Alex, back to the tournament there. We, uh, it's, a, it's a good cup. I got, we actually have three of these. Me and uh, both the girls have, each have one of these for our, our win that year. So. I like it. It's a good cup. So, uh, before we get going on the actual topic, a couple of things. Uh, hey, uh, yeah, 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 look, Hacks watching. Um, I always like doing these at night because like, I, I get we have different audience members that actually get to watch it live. So it's kind of cool. Um, so... Some of you may have heard tomorrow's my birthday, uh, or if you're in LOCAG, today's my birthday, so happy birthday to me. Um, but I want to do something a little different than me getting presents, because I hate presents. I'm going to give you guys a present. Uh, so since I'm doing gambling swag today, and we'll talk about what that entails in a minute, uh, I'm going to do a giveaway for this show. Uh, so if you're watching out there, let me know. And I'll remind people about this a couple times throughout the show. Make sure you, in the uh, comments or the chat, wherever you are watching from, uh, drop your name and where you're watching from, and that'll get you entered into the thing. And before I close out the show, I'll do a random wheelie draw, and you'll get a bag of stuff from me. So there you go. Happy birthday to me for you to you from me for me. Oh, there you go. So we got uh, low cap. We have Artemisia watching. No coffee, just tequila. Good job, Aslac. I like it. Uh, I drank entirely too much this weekend at Full Zor, so it's a uh, it's coffee recovery still for me today. I uh, see uh, we have Atlantia watching. His Excellency Fergus. Hey, Fergus. How you doing, buddy? And then a couple of Meridians. Uh, there you go. All, all the people's watching. Yeah, I know you're... There's... Oh, no, 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 Armesian. Hey, guys. Good to see everybody. All right. So, gambling swag. This is going to be a, a, like I said, a weird topic sort of just hanging out tonight. Um... Because I want to do some crafting, and I'm, I, like I said, I'm coming off of Fool's War. So we just got back from Fool's War, which was an amazing weekend. Um, so if anybody doesn't know, Fool's War is an event here in Meridian. So it's a melee-themed event um, that usually has some sort of, you know, theme. So this year it was Vikings uh, invading Paris or Normandy or whatever, one of those things. The theme doesn't really matter a whole lot, usually. A um, ton of great fights. Uh, it was us and the Trimerians there. Um, just a ton of good fights. Uh, but uh, also my friend uh, Duchess Dismay, uh, now known as the Dame Duchess, uh, was uh, elevated to the Pelican this weekend, and I got to help with that. Uh, uh, both Kisa and I did actually. Kisa ran the bar for her vigil, and I ran her guard uh, for her vigil tent, and that was a ton of fun. Involved me staying up till 5 o'clock in the morning, but uh, definitely worth it for to make sure she had that experience. So lots of fun. Didn't get to do any gaming, unfortunately, like I wanted to, but... Uh, Lots of drinking, lots of carousing, and uh, lots of seeing some old friends that I hadn't seen in quite some time. So, good. Um, but this topic actually came out of Gulf Wars a few, oh, God, almost a month ago now. And I was talking to some people at Gulf Wars about, about gambling and what we do in the SCA. So, for anyone who doesn't know, it's, if you haven't watched, if you've watched me more than five minutes, you know that I like gambling. It's kind of my jam. Um, and... The SCA likes gambling, but obviously we can't gamble in a lot of states we're in for legal reasons, Alabama being one of them. Um, for some weird-ass reason, we can't gamble here, but we can, we can go an hour either direction and gamble because that's how this country works. Um, so we make sure when we gamble in the SCA, we don't use any real money or at least any current money. 
Um, there is some stuff in my box that is older money or some foreign currency, maybe that's sneaked in there over the years. Um, but you know, it's a little less uh, problematic. But because we don't use real money, people like, well, what are you? What are you gambling with? So I was talking to uh, some people at Gulf Wars, and uh, specifically Her Excellency Jack, uh, Baroness of Small Gray Bear, who was uh, trying to come up with some stuff to to have for her people. Uh, after I called her out to her queen for not supporting her barony properly, we'll be Jack. Hope you're watching. Um, that anybody who's never who's never, never done fun court shit with other people, and especially involving crowns, it's, it's it gets hold really hilarious. And so, uh, p pick on your friends in front of people. It, it leads to some fun times. Uh, anyway, so she was uh, realizing she was having to throw a whole lot of money at her gambling habits because she's terrible at playing games apparently. And she wanted to help support her barony and other her other running people, but was buying these boxes and boxes of really expensive beads to gamble with. And I was like, Jack, why are you doing that? I mean, that's great. I, I appreciate people throwing money at it, but uh, it's definitely not required, right? There's a whole lot more you can gamble with. And so I, I pulled out my boxes of them and started going through it with her. I was like showing her the, the amount of stuff I had or the differences of stuff I had and have acquired the years from, from, other people gambling, people giving me stuff from um, winning various back alley deals of things and helped her realize that she didn't need to spend as much money as she was all the time. Um, so I was like, you know, we should talk about this, right? Because it's it's a thing that that I like to see in the SC. I think uh, you know, in, in period, in, in our in our period of time, there's a lot of people who gambled and you, there, we have a ton of instances of gaming and gambling throughout the the, the decades and, and centuries there. And whereas they use coin, but a lot of them didn't have coin. They used rocks and stones and beads and widgets and whatever was value with them at the time. So I think for us in the SCA, we have a lot of things that are valuable to us that are not money. We do have a large money and culture that is making struck coins. Um, but that's a, it's a skill, right? And, and not everybody has that skill. Not everybody's going to be able to acquire those readily. Um, or consistently. So there's ways to do that. Um, so I think I'm going to start off first going, going through my boxes. And, and that's the first thing I think if you're, if you're going to be a gambler, uh, you should acquire a box. So all my boxes that I have have been acquired at thrift stores uh, over the years. So go to your local antique store, your thrift malls, and, and search for little medievally looking boxes. These usually run two to five bucks, up to, upwards of 10, 20, if you get nicer ones. Um, but these are a great way to keep your stuff and you put it on the table and it doesn't look goofy. Um, dice bags are also useful. So anybody, if you're a gamer out there and you have dice bags laying around, those work just as well. And you can keep them in your pouch. Um, I don't like carrying myself in a pouch on my belt because then if that pouch falls open or, or I need to take it off, it's a little harder. Um, but boxes are useful and I can carry these in my bag. Um, or I'll keep a little bag on me in a pouch. So it's a separate bag in a pouch. So, so that's one box. Show that one off there. Uh, this is one I picked up that we used to use for steampunk stuff back in the day. So it's sort of got a metally cover on it. But again, super just nothing to it box. Cost a couple bucks at the thrift store. And it holds a ton of stuff. And we'll go through it then in a little bit here. Um, my favorite one I found, uh, Keith and I picked this one up at a local thrift store here in Mobile. It was like a secondhand uh resale store um it was broken when i found it then i was able to fix the clasp on it but it's like a little treasure chest it's just, just a cool little box so this is the, this is what i'll put out like when i'm going to be sitting around gambling for a while and i keep in it i've got little bags of stuff that i then keep separated so i've got coins in one bag got dice in one bag and beads in one bag so basically to find certain things i'm looking for and then I keep this little box with a mix of stuff in it for I need to throw something in my bag or box to carry with me. So makes it a little easier. All right, so let me catch up on comments real quick because I'm having to, have to back and forth here. Marbles, trinkets, gems, coins, not real money, of course, beads, jewelry bits are all things we use in black company. There you go. So yeah, it, 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 I think a lot of people know about this, but it's something that I realized it was, wasn't talked about enough, and we're starting to get people talking about gambling but not knowing what to gamble with. So that helps. And actually, all right, FYI, again, this is going to be a little scattered because I'm going to pause occasionally and catch up on comments and put people's names and things. So 
I spell things correctly here. Lokak as lag the awful Fergus. All right, Elfric and Frida and. Doop, doop. Um, and those of you watching on Facebook, also too, I, I realize YouTube doesn't have this option. But if you're watching on Facebook uh, and you have pictures of your boxes or gambling swag, drop them in the Facebook chat. Um, I will go see them right now, but they'll be there for people that are in the chat. Drop them in the comments there. Um, I'll pick them up and look at them a little while later. Uh, so that would be super cool. Angie, I forget your real name. Or your other name? I forget your real name. I know your real name is Angie. Give me your other name, Angie, because I forget it. Uh, Sammy, I got you. Malatesta. That's a cool name. Something else I like about the SCA is people come up with some of the coolest names. I think I got it right. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my little box here. I'm going to have to kind of dump it out and then go through it. All right. First of all, I'm going to show you a thing that Kisa bought me this weekend at Fool's War. Look at these tiny little dice. Aren't those adorable? So these are cool. So honestly, these are cool for gaming, but also cool as swag, right? So these are things that you can pick up at, at you know little merchants and that are probably nothing but a dollar or two that might be something you want to keep as a, as a special prize thing and not just for everyday things. That's something that's important. All right. So a lot of gaming tables I've been at. Thank you, Sophie. I see you. I, I knew it was something that wasn't that. Um, something that's important to a lot of gaming tables is most tables I've played at, and, and I know Fergus and others will attest to this, if you put on the table, it counts as one. So whether it's a giant bead thing or a coin thing, you know, or a, you know, a pearl, whatever, it counts as one. So that's when I'm making bead things, I try to make the thing be equivalent to one in my eyes or something I wouldn't mind losing against a one coin. Now, everything's gonna be equal. You're not always gonna find exactly one-to-one -one ratios of stuff, right? Um, so let me show you some different coins here. Oh, we'll start with coins. So coins are obviously the, the best thing to gamble with if you can find them. Um, Sir Joffrey picked up a bunch of these on, I'm guessing like Amazon or Oriental Trading, one of those places. But they're little like struck Asian coins that are that are mass produced. Um, they're super light, but they are metallic. They have a little hole in them. Uh, he gives these out so that um, he has extra of these to give out his swag. Um, that you know, so he has a bunch of these. But that's a really great way. You can pick these up on Amazon or Etsy, um, places like that for, for relatively expensively. If you want to just go quick and easy, cheap route. Um, and yeah, that, that's that's uh, what Fergus said is what, is what I meant. Is when you put something on the table, everybody has to agree is that it's one. Um, usually, uh, ways I've seen here done in radio is with some of them, if you're at a little more formal tables, the person leading the game is the one who determine whether whether determines whether it's one or not. Um, recently, I've seen a lot of tables where we just said, if you put it out there, it's one. That's what we're calling it. So, you know, you're declaring by putting out there that it, we agree it's one. Um, and it's very much based on the honor system. Um, whether it's one or not. So, you know, we've had some things that are a little less expensive, a little more expensive hit the table. If somebody that's um, like me or Dr. Smith has, a, has more stuff, see somebody put out like a, a bigger item, we might offer to buy it from them for 10, 20 coins, something like that, to give them more to gamble with. So if they have one big thing, we might offer them 10 things for their one big thing so they can play more. Um, that You'll see that happen a lot too. Um, so there's those, those little coins. Um, if you know people who strike coins, you'll get things like this. So these are little struck coins. These are these are aluminum. Um, I've seen the, the Moneyers Guild. There's an Inner Kingdom Moneyers Guild. Atlantia has a pretty good one. Um, Renee's has one here that's off and on. Um, they'll strike these for different things, um, different uh, events. I think this is a... Looks like a coronation one. Gareth and Uliana. Uh, I think it's from one of them from Atlantia. Um, 
or ethyl mark, maybe uh, ethyl mark. I bet. Uh, so I'll spend some ethyl mark in at uh, Gulf Wars. Um, and since he's watching, I'll show this one off. Uh, so I can find one with his, with his face on it over here. I know I've got one here somewhere. Yep. Okay. So from since Viscount Fergus is watching, there is Viscount Fergus in the coin. It's one of his uh, when he was prince, one of his rain coins with his bear paw on the back and his little face and axe on the front. So that's cool. So I, I like that in a coin because you can, if you make coins, you got people to make coins for you. Can do them so they're custom to you, or custom for a thing, uh, a rain, a knighting, a vigil, um, special event, a birthday, whatever you know, things like that uh, for different events. Looks like here's one that's a uh, another kingdom-based coin there. <laughs> yep, that that was a Fergus. Uh, I actually picked up uh, with I, I was playing with His Excellency Fergus over in Atlantia uh, when we uh, went on a trip actually out to Artemisia. Uh, those of you watching, uh, we stopped off and played played uh, dice games in a taco, a little, little uh, mom and pop taco shop over there. That was uh, our first day of meeting. It was, it was a ton of fun. So, uh, but yeah, so that that if you get struck coins, struck coins are great, right? That's those are awesome, and I I enjoy these because I they come with stories. You always can you know I, I like when I find get a coin. I want I want to hear where it came from. Where did you get it from? What, how, how, what, what did it come about? Um, if any of the LARPers are out there, uh, you'll, some of you might recognize these. These are LARP coins. Uh, they get these from uh, there's a the various vendors online that you can send them a die cut to a coin, and they send you little one coins or two coins or ten coins, whatever they have. Uh, so I've, I've had these from uh, Solar and Nexus, things like that, and I've still got some left, and they're spendable. Um, I don't have any currently in here, I don't think, but like Chuck E. Cheese tokens, uh, any of the arcade tokens are there. Oh, hi, Alex. Spe speaking of Alex, describe. Alex, you'll notice, you'll notice your, your handiwork it, 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 hanging out here. There you go. Uh, look at games that allows faux gambling. Does not translate into real world or real money. Correct. Buttons, game counters, poker chips, matches, whatever is to hand. I've seen some places do that. Um, at uh, Gulf Wars this year, uh, His Grace Rothen was running a gaming tavern. I was going to a uh, historical gaming thing. And he had a bunch of just like pennies out or things like that. And you basically you just got 20 pennies to play the game with. You didn't keep any of them. So we were using real money technically, but they were just faux counters. They weren't, we were actually gambling money per se. Um, so. I've seen that, but yeah, uh, buttons, game kind of thing like that. I like I like gambling for actual swag because you get to keep what you get. Um, like I said, usually uh, there are those of us who have extra stuff that give it away to people. Um, the coins are a thing now. I did mention real money, so you'll notice some of these when I pull them up are going to be real coins. So at least if I can find where these are from here. Uh, Republic Ostrike, the shilling. So not valid currency in the United States, not valid for the, for us at all. Is valid somewhere, right? So those of you who are foreign, uh, elsewhere, Canada, LOCAC, places like that, uh, be careful. You know, obviously your, your rules will vary. Um, if you're in different states, your, your rules will vary about what you can and can't use. Nobody's fussed about any of these yet because they are not American currency. Uh, this, I'm sorry, this, this screen, I realize, is terrible for doing this. Let me find that. So these are just uh, foreign coins. I picked these up actually at an antique store. Um, same place I got this, oh God, this box at. Um, they had a display up at their counter and it was like 30 coins for 10 cents or 50 cents. I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Cause they were just coins to them. They didn't care. So I went through and picked out everything that wasn't American currency and bought like 10 bucks worth of coins and came out with just like a giant sack of random coins. Um, and it's nice cause you, you can give them away. You can, you, 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 you don't care as much about them, I guess. And you can use them for. Uh, largesse or for gambling with and it's gives you a little a little more spending money so to speak um but if you don't have the ability to make coins or buy coins can't find coins beads are your best friend so i have a lot of things here currently that i'll show you then so i'll show you some that i've made uh her relationship Bruno made a lot of these for me but so people talk about beads let me see if I can find some of my more expensive beads here so that's the big box. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to talk about playing for beads, they often like hear like the, you know, the, the actual like lamp work glass beads that are you get from the vendors at various wars. Right. And they're expensive. 
Uh, they're not they're not cheap. Um, <laughs> beads. Yeah, no, also put beans. Uh, they're also I've seen people gamble with beans. Um, somewhere in here, it's gonna be a, a bit rambly topic here. Hold on, let me find. I have a bag of random widgets in here. That's not it. Aha, here it is. All right, so in my bag of random, because I sorted it into, into things. That's a tooth. That is an actual tooth. Uh, some 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 tooth of some animal got gambled, and I went, "Well, that's cool. I got a tooth now." Um, so yeah, beans, uh, teeth, little rocks, fancy rocks. Um, one guy at uh, at when was that Panhandle? I think maybe was gambling with with like amethyst like points. He had a he had a bag full of of, of gemstones that. You know, that's what he wanted to gamble with. And he, he said, nope, they're one. We're good. And I was like, okay. Um, he was happy with that. So, but beads with a D, um, you know, all people hear about that. But also you've got beads. If you go to gym and rock shows, you can pick up beads like this. or are little like, you know, I got these little skulls I picked up. Um, and I got a whole string of them for a couple bucks. And you just pop them apart and use the beads. Obviously, you can use them on stuff. Use them for you know treasure necklaces and whatnot. Um, but you don't. Then it's like you have a whole bunch of little things that that's a thing that I would be willing to get. Um, I pick up those. Also found these little elephants. Oh god, that's a terrible green color. It is. There you go. Little elephant bead. Uh, it's got a hole in the bottom and top. But th these are perfect, right? It's a, it's a one thing, right? Now, these are slightly more expensive, so it's by itself. Anyway, there's a crafter, which most of us in the SCA have some sort of craft we've done or know a crafter. We have too much craft things. Can go to that crafter and say, hey, can I have some of your beads? And they're going to go, good God, please take some of these beads because we all acquire too many beads. And you take those beads that are slightly less expensive and you get a piece of wire and you string them on a piece of wire. And those beads individually are not terribly expensive or worth anything or, or you know, fancy. But you get three of them, four of them, two of them, whatever together, and you now have a nice little gambling token. So these are on uh, just a little piece of wire that she just cut in sections and then bent. Uh, it's got some little metal rings on it. Got a little glass bead. These are mostly glass beads. Um, there's some plastic ones in here. There's some you know some nice stone ones in here that are just smaller ones. That one's a little just smaller little glass beads. Um, but things that, you know, obviously you can keep it on this, use it as a gambling thing, or if you would like the beads, take them off, put them on your treasure necklace, uh, things like that. Um, quick update for those just tuning in or those watching now. Make sure I'm doing a giveaway during this show. Make sure you let me know who you are and where you're from in the comments over yonder there or chat down below. Uh, give me your name and, and location and you'll get entered into the drawing and you're going to get some swag. So I like that. So is it, but wire, wire is an option. Um, let me find some of the other ones I've got. Do, 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 do. Also, I'm going to show off, uh, since I see Patrona's in the comments now, hi, Patrona. Uh, I'm going to show off some of her coins here in a minute, too. Because she sent me some amazing swag to Gulf Wars, guys. So, you guys all know me. Everybody knows me out there now. Everybody's like, oh, it's Cal. Cool. It, it's been weird for me getting out to an event, especially going to Gulf Wars was weird. I uh, had a semi-celebrity status and I was not okay with it at first. I, I got I got used to it and I'm, and I'm just, it was a weird thing. But Petrona did a thing where she sent two of her random, uh, two of her newer, newer players, I think it was her first Gulf Wars, uh, to find me with a box of swag. And it was amazing largesse and from her people and her barony, uh, barony of Shadow Crystal uh, and just awesome stuff and included the box of her coins. Uh, or a bag of her coins, rather, that, that were struck, that are just so cool. They're little dainty coins. I love them. It's got the little uh, little shattered crystal. This would be terribly impossible to see. There we go. Little shattered crystal emblem on the back. And there's nice little coins, but I have a whole little bag of coins. I have actually given some of these away already, Patron, just so you know. Some of them the, some of them did get gambled with. And there's some of them in this pile here, too, as well. Um Let's see, there's some new people come in. Let me uh, update my names real quick. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, 
Sven from Artemisia. Some new names out there, guys. Welcome. I appreciate you guys tuning in tonight. Um, if you missed the first part of this, please uh, go back and watch what's, what, what you've missed. We're just kind of hanging out chatting tonight. So I think uh, that would be a real formal night. Ooh, that's a... Mowry. I'm just going to leave it at that. See, I, I'm going to read this whole name because that's, that's just a cool name. Lady Lowry Furch Gwyn. God, I hate Gaelic names. Gwyn a win a win? Gwyn win win win? Gwyn win win. Did I get that right? Am I, am I right? In the Locat Games Guild, Shire of Border Cross. Board, Bordis Cross? Yeah. Um, I've heard about the, 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 the Roni Festival, actually. I was, whenever I ask people about uh, games in Locat or things, things in Locat, they tell me about the Roni Festival. So that's one. If I ever make it out to uh, y'all's direction, Roni Festival will be the one I'm going to do. All right. So we got Car from Black Company. Appreciate Black Company watching. Uh, Jean Vier. All right. All right. So if you can't do wire bending, a lot of folks don't have wire, but you can pick up the like. So wire like this is craft wire. You get it at Joanne's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, places like that. Don't shop at Hobby Lobby, places like that. Uh, but if you can't, I pick up these little eye pins from the same places. I like these because I am not a crafter. And these are, in my opinion, perfectly sized. So it's a two-inch eye pin. Uh, they also have head pins of different size top one. But this has a full ring on the bottom. It saves me a step. Because so what I can do then is I can take that piece and make these with it. So I can hook you know, something on the bottom in the little eye. Uh, or through the eye, I can run beads on it, basically fill it up, and then loop the top. And it just it's it makes a perfect little thing, and that's a that's a nice little thing to to, to gamble with. Um, I'll put a little metal thing on the bottom, put some glass beads, plastic beads on top, um, put a bone thing on it, whatever. Well, there's a little fox token there. These are super fast to make, and you can do them sitting around. Like so that's actually one we make here tonight. Um, so a bunch of those. If you have access to a laser. Uh, or somebody with a laser engraver. You can make little wooden tokens. I got these on Amazon uh, as just generic wooden coins. And then laser my KK thing on one side. And I wrote heed on the back. I use these to pay marshals. So I can actually pay the marshals and heralds heed. Because you're supposed to pay them heed. Which is funny. Um, oh, I'm sorry. My wife is correcting me. These are called dangly doos. These are dangly doos. Uh, is the, the proper term for them. Um, that's a little thing there. Uh, I like I like using my laser because you can make different stuff with it. Um, and if you ever want to, uh, if you ever need something lasered out there, by the way, this is sort of a general offer. If you have an event coming up or need something lasered, I'm happy to help with that. Um, so send me what you need. Send me what you want. We'll, we'll talk about that. The little KK whimsy tokens I made. Um, I give these out in, for gambling, whatnot. So it's, again, it's just easy to put together and relatively low cost. Now. There are going to be higher stakes games. Let me just say that now. So all these things so far have been won. You're going to find things in your travels. Go to the flea markets, go to antique stores, things like that, and find cheap stuff that looks important. Uh, and you're going to gamble some bigger stuff. So I acquired things, and this is what this box is for, is my larger gambling items. Um, picking up costume jewelry. These are just a little ring. Um... A little uh, bookmark. I think it's actually one of the things that came from Patrona, her largest thing. Nice little silver, like a silver plated bookmark. Um, some bigger beads or actual you know, necklaces, right? So I'm not going to throw this down as a one, but it get a higher stakes table, something worth it. And stuff you can find at uh, is it antique stores or flea markets for relatively inexpensively, or catch them in a bag where half of it may be broken, but some of it's not. And for a couple bucks, you've got some nice gambling swag. Um, now, people also do struck coins that are more expensive. Uh, this is actually one of my one of my prize positions I got from Sir Fergus. Uh, they from Sir Takeshi's knighting, his vigil token or his knighting token. They reproduction coin from a one of the, the Japanese coin sets, but it's just super cool looking. Um, oh God, I just broke my laptop with it. It's super. It's it's not real heavy actually. It looks really heavy. It's actually not. Uh, so that's a neat thing. Um, their graces, Tim and Ismay, made these during their reign. These are actually poured. So struck. 
So these are thank you coins because they it's Tim and Ismay, uh, Ismay with a Y. I don't know what crown on the back of it. These are poured, uh, probably aluminum cast metal, not very expensive. If you ask me, they can be cast metal for you. So this is over there. Uh, some nicer bead things. So it's a little, a little nicer bead bit, you know, things like this that are more expensive than a one. Keep in a separate box. Pull them out when you need to. Pull them out when you need a special gift for somebody. So that's that. All right. Um, so where do you get beads from? Obviously, beads come from anywhere, you know, talk to your local crafters, talk to uh, their pewter. Oh, thank you. They're, those are little pewter bits. I don't do metal casting. So that was a little pewter coin. Um, but uh, pick up beads from anywhere. Uh, I, I've seen beads at, at flea markets and antique stores. Uh, plenty of crafters have beads. Uh, obviously, you want to stay away from plastic if you can, but you got some really nice ones. I wouldn't mind it. But we have... Uh, so between uh, my two ladies uh, here in the house and uh, her ladyship, Bruna, I have more beads than I ever know what to do with. So we sorted these out into styles. So metal, so these are like the, you know, sort of Viking-ish metal beads. A um, little heavier, probably a little more expensive. Uh, but again, you can find them. Something that Keith and I have done is we've actually found broken necklaces in, you know, in piles of junk at Goodwill or whatever. The, the necklace itself is broken, the clasp broken, bits of it are broken, whatever. But the beads were still good. Or the necklace was really, really ugly. But individually, the beads are really pretty. So buy the cheap necklace for a dollar, and you get 30 beads out of it. Or you know, buy it for 50 cents, you get 30 beads out of it. It's not a bad deal. Because um, you get stuff like that, or you'll get these glass beads like this. I'm not going to turn this thing over. These are little glass beads, various style types. Um, I've picked them up from, you know, craft sales. Uh, I've got a big box that, um, that Fiona gave me stuff she can't use for her beading work, but it's stuff that we can gamble with them and I use to give away for large ass and things. So, little widgets like that. Um, I also going to have to pick up bone, uh, bone and antler beads like these from, from again, craft stores and like that. Thrift stores sell bags of beads for $10 because they want to get rid of them because they end up with more beads than they know what to do with because nobody needs them. Largesse and gambling is the perfect use for those because, again, it's not something that's going to break your bank, but also won't, uh, you know, will, people will enjoy it. People will like will like getting them. Uh, so when I'm going to do game, when I'm going to do beading, which I'm going to do here like a little bit, and uh, let's answer, let's talk questions. I don't know. There's there's 19 of you watching. Uh, let's let's do a, a Cal ask me anything I guess uh, while I beat some things and we'll uh, answer questions, talk about gambling things, talk about our favorite games. Um, so what I usually do when I'm gonna make large S is I get my beads put together and I get my my pliers. So for pliers I've got little cheap uh, you know beading pliers or like needle nose pliers, Harbor Freight special for like a dollar. Um, the only thing I'm going to worry about when I'm doing beading is that make sure that the beads I have have a hole that is smaller than this so they don't slide through. So if you catch one that's like, I think that one's too big here. This is going to be too big. It's like this one. Okay, right, that one stops. Okay, so that one's actually roof right. So I'll find one that works um, and put it on the bottom. Now, the cool thing is once there's one on the bottom, I can put other stuff on it that's maybe larger that wouldn't fit ordinarily. Um, I try to color coordinate. I'll do like an all green one. Yeah, if I get three together, easy enough. I'll grab the bottom bit and put my pliers on the top bit and just twist. So you'll get a little hook like this. And that's not super secure. I realize I use green first, so the green's gonna disappear, but like the hook's not super secure. But what I'll do is I'll actually just kind of crimp it down. I'm not worried about this being like a permanent fixed thing. Um, because people are gonna take them apart later. But that is now a there you go. Gimli token. Add that as well. Um there you go. So, of course, I ask, I ask what the favorite game is, and Fergus responds with Sheep Captain Crew. So, Fergus, I have to tell you, 
I taught Ship Captain Crew at Gulf Wars, and of course, every time I teach it, I mention you as the as the originator of the game. I uh, taught it to Master Sir Joffrey, who's the uh, proprietor of Cock and Feather Gaming Tavern, and some of the other people who are playing. It has become a popular game here, Meridiaes. It is one of the most enjoyable games we have now. Between that and Knuckle Bones, it is the two things we play most. Um, I did have to, when Joffrey ran the game, he uh, he switched the rules up on me a little bit and threw me off, where he did his backwards from the way uh, the way the Westerners do it. But uh, as it was his table, I you know I couldn't argue the point with him. So. And yes, oh, oh god, I should I should change the name of the show today to Crafts with Cal versus Coffee with Cal. Although I'm doing, I'm having both coffee and crafts. All right, here's a good example. All right, so I have a bead. You watch it, will fall straight through. So that's one of the hard sides of this is finding beads that fit for your first one. Uh, and then you can get the other thing. Hi, Maya. You come hang out on the show. I mean, there's my cat, Maya. Um. So occasionally you get bigger reads like this, and I won't put as many on it, or I'll try to do, you know, a coordinated set, something something small at the top, kind of round it out. Whereas I'm not a crafter, I really enjoy doing this. Um, I think it gets me connected more to what I'm doing and the gaming stuff, and like, if you feel like I'm part of that, and it's like, and it's a craft I can do, it's relatively easy to do. Um, it doesn't require a whole lot of uh, thought or effort. And I can do while I talk. People are saying hi to you. Kisa called you Princess Fluffy Pants, which I know you love so much. Yes, my cat is Princess Fluffy Pants because she has the fluffiest butt known to imagination. I'm not sure why her butt's so fluffy. We're not. No, ma'am. Hi. What's good? What do you think? Don't look good? Yeah. All right. Cool. She approves. You, I enjoy it. I'm a crafter. Okay, fine. I'm a crafter. Um, so I've had that, that's an interesting topic. Act. I've had an issue over the years calling myself an artisan. Uh, so I've done a couple of ANS fairs, uh, and my approach to ANS has always been much more science than than art, uh, because I enjoy doing breakdowns of how things function, but I'm not a huge fan of doing like period recreation scroll like I, i've done some scribal work uh, i've done some um um like you know metal work i've done some woodwork i've done i've done a couple different craft things right that are, are there arts stuff but i'm just i'm not a huge i've done some weaving right i've, I've tried all of it I've tried a lot of it um but i'm not a huge fan of doing the ans projects for that but what i have done is i've done the science side I've done some breakdowns on how games work um i've actually got one in my head right now i'm going to do or actually two one that's I'm going to do a recreation, uh, a class I taught of board game graffiti, essentially, and look at sort of the evolution of, you know, is it is it a board game or is it graffiti uh, as an ANS project, which uh, I think it'll be, I think it's going to be fun. But there's another one based on a Scythian tale. Uh, so Scythians do not have written language. So, uh, so, some of the other way I know it, my, my persona is Scythian, um, which is a uh, pre-BCE, or I'm sorry, pre AD uh, BCE culture that did not have a written language uh, that we know of. They, they, there is there is no instance of any of their writing existing anywhere um, that we found. And there is one tale that uh, that Herodotus writes about about them, where they had to send a message to an army that was going to be that was invading, was coming towards their territory or whatever. And because they didn't have a written culture, they couldn't really do that. So they sent them three objects. Uh, with a messenger, and the objects were a bird, a dead, uh, a feather, uh, a, a, a dead frog, and an arrow, or maybe a bird, a fish, and an arrow. I think it was a bird, a fish, and an arrow, something like that. Uh, anyways, th three objects that were representative of things. And the the concept was to th the message they were sending was, if you can't fly like a bird or swim like a fish, you're going to catch these arrows. <laughs> Um, I was like, that's badass. That, that is a, like, you know, graffiti way to send a message, but I love it. Um, so I'm considering an ANS project right now of doing basically, uh, that, a version of that where I put out three objects or, or like pictures of three objects and talk about that story 
but the 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 sort of interactive part of it, because I, I like interactive experiences when I do ANS stuff, is going to be to figure out what the message is and, and leave it out for the uh, people to vote on what the message that I'm trying to deliver with these various objects is. I think it's going to be a funny one. Uh, I might not. Uh, I probably won't enter it as like an actual like judge thing because it, I doubt it's going to be judgeable or doubt it's going to be a, enough to be judgeable. Um, but it's going to be a fun one, I think, from a populist side to see what they think of it. Let me pause some, some moments. But yeah, but yeah. So like that, that, that that's not really a, you know a, a, a craft thing, right? But it's more of a science of the like the concept of that communication. I think it's really neat. It's something I'm going to work on. Um, I know uh, her relationship with Drusilla here in Merdiers has a very similar approach to the ANS that I do. Uh, she likes the science side of stuff, and so does like uh, there's a couple others that do some of that. So they're, they're getting more into that. She did one. She was the first one that really broke into the science thing, at least in, in the recent error of uh, she did some roman concrete so her thing was not really art i mean argument because you could say it was but it was a lot more the science of how roman concrete was created uh, she wrote a whole paper on it actually uh it's being published i think in one of the queen and Acris. her and um uh, her grace uh, thorcatla i think are working on a paper for that or in the process of that somewhere so what do you think i'm pretty like that one? cool um which I think is really neat. I, I like seeing how things happen, and how things are made, um, and that's really that's really cool. And I think she worked on with that, you know, the Roman concrete. And there's there's one of the other things she's done with it, but she's really made a name herself about Roman concrete. So it's neat. So. All right, so we're doing crafts with Cal here. So questions. Let me ask you questions. Let me bring a question up. I've uh did some TikToks recently. Uh, I'm just going to keep talking, so please type. Did some TikToks recently that uh, I need to I need to finish doing some more of them about my baronial uh, mining keys' attempt to be the Baron and Baroness of Osprey, and uh, it did not. Uh, we did not win, uh, which, is, which is fine. But uh, in doing that, it actually made me think about what the uh, the duties of a Baron were, and that was really cool, actually. And uh, I was doing some TikToks on that. If you're if you follow me on TikTok, if not at Calbarger, at Calbarger, same up there. Uh, follow me out there. Uh, I post sporadically, so I don't get too excited about it, but uh, some good content out there. But uh, I was doing, there was a questionnaire sent out by one of the baronies about to, to their people, because uh, they were also doing a, a polling. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to answer these, because I think these are really good questions to, as a as a prospective candidate for the baron, uh, baronage. What are we talking about? I don't like that one. So I'll make some of these like this and like this one, it works and I'm, I'm not going to undo it. Right. But it's, I, I like it less, uh, but I want to use that one big bead. So it's one big bead and a couple of small beads. Uh, so it's less. What do you think? Oh, he seems to like it. All right. Maya likes it. We're good then. Um, but uh, yeah, so ask me questions about that. Ask me questions about uh, my habits and my hobbies. I don't know. Um, Talk about Fool's War some more, I guess. That was fun. Uh, anybody who hasn't been to Fool's War, I know Fergus was asking about it. Um, well, this is my, actually my first year going to Fool's War. Uh, it's hosted by the Shire of Tierbrist in southern Georgia. And it was a ton of fun. Uh, the event itself was very low-key, very chill. A lot of just good time to hang out with people. Um, but uh, it was just it was a, some good fights, man. I really enjoyed it. Um, a lot of great camaraderie. The, uh, the vigil was just amazing. Um, this latest I've ever had to stay up for a vigil, um, but I did get the benefit of being the last person to speak with it with uh, her grace that that evening, which was kind of cool. Uh, it was stupid early in the morning; I was stupid cold, but uh, nice conversation. Let's see. Genevieve says, "I really only like games at events." Hold on, let me kick it to my mouse because my cat's sitting on it, so I'll use that. I really like games and events that are entirely chance-based because honestly, I don't want to think that hard when relaxing. Thoughts? I actually completely agree with that. I, I enjoy games like uh, like Nimes Morris and um, and, and Neftoffel and things like that. Right? I enjoy those games. Don't get me wrong. And, and I'm I think I'm relatively good at them. Although anybody who's watched my show will think I'm trash at them because I can't win on camera. Uh, but I think from a casual gaming perspective, from a getting people to play games. Games of chance are, make the most sense. Uh, and games that are fast. So playing like Senate or uh, Royal Game or 
that are mostly chance based, but you still have some, some skill is nice. They do take a while. Um, and they're two players. But games like Ship Captain Crew, Gluck House, Knuckle Bones, Hazard, things like that, that are usually you know dice games, essentially, uh, mostly dice games, uh, I think are a lot better for casual gaming at events. Uh, Gluck House is the easiest game ever to learn. If you ever played Gluck House, uh, we did a, a it was one of the, the, the dice, dice nights I did with the Westies. Um, I think it was the first one I had to mute Fergus on. Um, but the, the concept of the game is roll two dice and either pay a coin or lose a coin. That's it. That's the entire, that's the entire game. Um, and it, the, uh, the anecdote of it is you can play it while you're drinking because it only requires one hand. Uh, so I think that's super important. Uh, and, and thank you for that question. That was really a, that's, that's, I think my concept of gaming is it's supposed to be fun. Um, let me just talk about when I do a lot of the game shows. Uh, I haven't, I haven't watched play Wednesday in a while, but uh, when I've done them is you know, make sure you agree with your, with your opponent on your rules. So like ship captain crew is a great example of this. And, uh, when you sit down at the table, make sure that whoever's running the games gives you the rules so that everybody agrees on it. There's no confusion later. But, uh, you know, the simpler the rules, the better for especially a late night drinking game. Fergus says maybe. It was not maybe, Your Excellency. It was definitely. I definitely had to mute you. Uh, Maya, you're on my mouse, baby. You cannot control the thing. If you're going to control the stream, you got to push the buttons. Um, Yes, we, we played we played Nefetoffel before drinking. We play Gluckhaus after drinking. That's the important one. Uh, Safi says, I actually played my first chance-based games at Great Western War this year. Um, it was a crazy fun way to spend the spend the running. I could walk in, learn the game in less than 20 minutes, and just turn my brain off and enjoy the company. Bingo. Uh, that's the best part. Just turn, turn your brain off and enjoy the company. Because you can play and still talk and, and, and drink. and like If you're playing Gluckhaus, you can get up and walk away. And come back and you miss a turn. Oh well, like not a big deal. Tar Todd House, first time I played it. Uh, last gathering made so much racket laughing and groaning. Folk kept coming to see what was causing all the mirth. Yep. Gluckhouse, it's boring if you're not playing for swag. So we played Gluckhouse at um, um, what is it called? Uh, at, at Gulf Wars with the on with the Onstorians. When we first sat down, they were playing with just the with pennies. Everybody got 20 pennies to drop when we played. And I realized that was boring because I wasn't losing anything. I wasn't gaining anything. I wasn't enjoying, uh, I wasn't getting joy to play because I wasn't, I wasn't getting cool stuff. And we played, then we played a game with the Ethamarchians and they had their own cool coins. And I was like, yeah, this is much better. Right. I realized that was the thing. I was like, I have to be gambling to care about the game. Um, even if it's, you know, $5 worth of random loot from, from Etsy. I don't care. It's something. Right. Um, that's pretty big. It's a weird uh, black crusty bead. That's neat. Is the hole too small? Nope. Perfect. Excellent. Um, what are some of the high stakes you've seen thrown in a table? You know, actually, I can't. I, I'm sorry for this. Uh, I have not been to a high stakes table. Uh, I've been trying in Radiates to get gaming going a little more. Uh, Joffrey and I are working to get more gaming happening. We have a lot of newcomers. And we have a lot of people who haven't played before, so it's hard to get um, more gaming habits. People don't have, people have stuff, so we're, we've been giving out stuff and things like that. Um, I knew uh, Her Excellency Jack uh, from Small Gray Bear, after I gave her crap at Gulf Wars, is now making sure her people are uh, well endowed with swag and making sure they're collecting things. So I'm excited for next trip in Don Stora to go see them and play with them now because they've got some new cool stuff for me to go take from them. Um, and... Uh, but uh, yeah, so you know, it's a thing. Uh, so I'll ask this: um, uh, those of you out there, Fergus and others, uh, what, what's 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 your biggest thing you've seen or you've thrown at a table? Uh, Fergus probably hasn't heard about this. Um, Fergus almost won the crown of the West. So okay, let me. When I first read this this comment, Fergus is a fighter. I was like, oh, he he did well in crown list. And I was like, no, no, he means at a gambling table. And I realized because I can't see, uh, for a little bit of a reference, I can't see comments that are stacked under comments. I just see them in order. So I didn't realize that was probably in response to the uh, to uh, Patrona's question. But yeah, I believe he almost won the Crown of the West. That's a thing. I, I Fergus, I need that story later, sir. I do. <laughs> oh, I've heard some weird things happen with the Crown before. Um, I have a friend of mine from the Mists who uh, apparently owns the Crown of Kaid because uh, he licked it. So, you know. 
Let's see. Uh, Safia asked, "What is Gluckhaus?" Uh, Gluckhaus is a uh, game called. Uh, it's, the game is called Gluckhaus. It, it translates to House of Fortune. Uh, there are twelve spaces on the board, uh, two through twelve. I'm sorry, eleven spaces on the board, two through twelve. And you roll two dice, you know, two six-sided dice, like these, and you pay a coin to the, the board if you roll that number. On a seven, you always pay seven is the wedding. Uh, and on a four, usually the board's on a four, usually there's some, some sort of special rule. Uh, miss a turn, uh, toast the house. Uh, the last time we played, we did it where you paid the wedding and rolled again. Um, so that was kind of cool. Um, some things like that will happen. Uh, on a two, you get everything on the board except for the seven, because that's the pig, and the, he is greedy and takes all the stuff. Or a 12, that's the king. You get all the stuff on the board because the king takes all the, all the monies and the taxes and whatnot. Um, that's a lot of rules to remember, but it's it really, it's roll dice, pay or get a coin. Uh, or I say a coin, a thing, you know, a, a one thing. Um, oh, when you're making these things, make sure your top bead, if does, make sure the top bead doesn't have a big hole. Because then you get a, you have to make your little top thingy bigger, top trolley do bigger, to hold it on. So that's important. Um, copper race and silver races, that's a good thing to game with uh, from bigger stakes. I think I've got some of these in here. Little, you can get bags of these or box, you know, stacks of these for, uh, they, obviously these are going to be more expensive, but these are things you can pick up, little, little Viking torque things um, that are a little more, you know, Viking looking, or they make braces like this at, you know, again, antique stores, thrift stores, whatever. Um, they're going to be with. Um, don't tell Her Majesty Artemisia. This is my game. This is my game watch currently. It's not going to live in there long. This is a, uh, I'm guessing another pewter bit, uh, the Griffin of Artemisia. So from a little little populous badge, Duder, little populous thing. I got those out there. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on my hat. I'm making a, uh, uh, or I say I'm making my 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 lovely wife is making me a hat, my pilgrim's hat. That I'm gonna put that on. Uh, but it currently is in my gambling box. I'm gonna take it out of there. Um, here's one. There's a little bangle. God, Those little bangles. Perfect. Really, really inexpensive, but that's a cool like that's a that's a clearly more than one thing, right? <laughs> so, oh god. Okay, so when his manager realized they were gambling, he snatched the crown back up. But uh, that would have been funny because that dice would roll faster. That would happen. Um, we had uh, uh, for oh yeah, another roll for Gluckhouse on before you take a drink. Uh, it's, yeah, I like I like the forest for Gluckhouse because you get people making up their own rules for it, and you always get whatever the table rule is. Um, let's see. Fergus won some hand cast bu brass buckles with a guy's boots. That's that's there you go. Um, Magister Justina, I'm sorry, Magnifica Justina. Uh, after her elevation at uh, coronation, we were playing games, and uh, her belt broke as she was walking to the table. It was a beaded belt, like a large beaded belt, broke as she was on the table. So she's like, "Screw it," and just tied it off, and then started gambling with her belt. So, you know. Uh, thanks for coming, Genevieve. I'll, uh, I'll make sure if, if you win, I'll let you know. Uh, all right, so last call for names, guys. So if you're watching this show and you did not give me your name and uh, location, uh, please let me know. Um, I do see remote. I'll go ahead and toss you on the remote because I know you're watching. Um, make sure. So you've got Fikin is on there as well. I got you now, Fikin. A few people I know that I've seen on here. Taco Cat, do I have you? Yes, I have, I have Sven. There you go. Excellent. And Kit. Checking make sure I got everybody in here. I'll put Alex on because I see Alex is watching too. So I know she's out there. At least she was. Right. Oh. Toki from Trimeris. Welcome, Trimeris. I was talking bad about you guys earlier. I'm just kidding. I was not talking bad about Tremarians. I love my Tremarian friends. Um, I stabbed a couple of them this weekend. I did. It was fun. It wasn't a night then. Oh, man. Yeah, I can. I, I would say it would be problematic being a knight and winning the crown during gambling and having to hold it for ransom. That would cause some problems with Fieldy, I think. You'd have to, like, 
toss your chain back or I don't know that that's a whole thing. That's a that's a that, I think that's a different show for because we should talk about that one night. Um, speaking of shows, uh, I got I now that uh, His Majesty, I'm sorry, uh, His Grace James is no longer on the throne. Uh, His Excellency Fergus, His Grace James, and, and I are going to be doing a show here soon called Three Former Fat Guys. Uh, so all of us are in the tiny tummy. The tiny tummy club used to be much larger than we are uh, now. But uh, we <laughs> the the show idea was pitched to me because apparently Fergus and James, uh, James the Holy from Mountain Glen Alvin, tell stories and nobody really knows which of the stories are true or each of them embellishes a little differently in the stories. Uh, so we're going to do a show with just them two telling stories and me sort of uh, playing moderator in, in it. And uh, we're going to let the audience vote on who's telling the story correctly. Um, or just uh, get drunk and laugh at their stories, which is probably what it's going to end up being more of, frankly. I'm looking forward to hanging out with those two folks because they are uh, two, two amazing people. And that will be a strictly fun show, guys. Don't look at, forward to anything, uh, learning anything of that other than learning some terrible stories from the two of them. Because um, all of them are true, as Fergus says, but uh, truth is, is their truth is circumspect. Fergus, you know, Fika makes a good point there. Technically, if you swore to the crown and you win the crown, then it's a good point. Love reverse logic there. I like it. Tom gonna get excommunicated from uh, from Rodier's uh, gambling the crown. Now, I think there's a couple rules with uh, with when, with gambling is you don't uh, don't put it on the table while while there's while there's dice being rolled, and you don't take it to the potty with you. Uh, so, I think, uh, other than that, you should. Well, and there's there's some other rules too. We're not talking about on the show. Uh, don't uh, don't make a sex tape in it either. <laughs> Turns out that's the bad news bears. Um, you would you would have yes, yeah, Fergus. You would have been protecting it. That's correct. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see what else is coming up, guys. Uh, I, I guess shows I'll promote here in a second. Uh, Bit of news for those, and because some of you are out there watching out in the West now, although it's, since it's less late for you now than it usually is. Um, end of June, early July, Kisa and I and a friend will be heading out to Gold Beach, Oregon to visit the Kingdom of Ontier for West Ontier War, or Ontier West War, depending on where you're coming from. Uh, so, if you're out the West or out that direction, plan to go to Ontier West War uh, and come see me. We will be doing a recorded show from there because my coffee with Cal should be while I'm at West Ontier that week. Uh, but apparently there is zero signal on site for West Ontier. Um, so there is a there's no chance of doing a show live, but uh, I was not going to pass up an opportunity to do shows with people from out there. Uh, specifically, hopefully I get to include the Princess of the Mist, or yeah, we'll, she will be Princess of the Mist at the time, Helga. Uh, and uh, Baron Logan and a couple others that are awesome friends of mine. Um, so if you can't make it out to come hang out with us, please make sure you watch that show and, and show them your love and things like that. But speaking of shows, it is about time to wrap up, guys. Uh, so I've made some cool things here. I'll, I'll show you. Okay, so I've been beating for what, uh, 20 minutes or so? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things. Looks like I want to make tonight. So ten, ten little doodads. Not bad for chatting and talking and things like that. So, I think that's the, the, the really what I show tonight is, is how to do this, what sort of what you can get out of this, and, and that is now a proper bag of you know here's a here's a starter kit for somebody, right? So as as somebody who, who likes making large and likes giving stuff to newcomers, this is a great way to get them started. It's a relatively expensive way to uh, equip a newcomer, and this will be your uh, part of the winnings for tonight. So. If your name is in the pot, uh, we will uh, you'll get some stuff from me. Let's see. Tracy says, uh, Ancient Games, Roll Game of Ur, Senate, Mayhem, Mancala, also uh, Pulak and Patoli, also great games. Um, Taroki and Gluckhaus, Goose, Byzantine Chess, all great games. Again, so don't get me wrong. I love I love all of the games. Right? I love playing games. I think it's part of my... Uh, my path to knighthood, path to peerage, so to speak, is is being better at games and sort of making that part of my culture. Um, those are much harder to gamble on and much harder to get people new people started with. Um, at least, uh, Nyman's Morris isn't, uh, but uh, and, and Wargame at Ur isn't, but it's hard to be good at it, I think. Um, 
but Gluckhouse is an easy one. Uh, game of the Goose is a fun one, too. Uh, so we gamble Game of the Goose as well. Um, Master Joffrey's rules for Game of the Goose is when you hit the goose, you pay the pot. You ante at the beginning, you, you pay the goose, you hit the pot, uh, pay the pot. And any special space, like the inn, the well, things like that, you pay the pot as well. And if you bump someone else off, if you swap somebody else you know, on the base, you pay them directly. So that that's when you you lose a lot of money playing that one. And whoever, obviously whoever gets the end first wins. I have seen a drinking version of that game where they just do it, where they keep playing. When you get to the end, you make up a new rule and keep drinking. So that's the thing. Uh, Inkins Gamble with Coffee Beans. That's amazing. I want to do a coffee bean uh, themed gambling night. I like coffee. Coffee with Cal Gambling Edition. I like it. All right. We'll start with a couple shows coming up. Promote the Patreon, a couple of things like that, and then we'll uh, do some signing off stuff and do my spinning wheel. All right. So next on, uh, so this Sunday coming up should be Road to Retention, but it is Easter Sunday. And I believe uh, the Artemisia Crown list, if I'm not mistaken, and Remote will be busy with that and coming off of that. So we're going to give her a weekend off. Um, Excuse me. So we will not have a show this week. My next Sunday show uh, will be the following Sunday. Uh, joined by one of our, our viewers tonight, jean uh, talking about aging out of peerage. So this is going to be the, uh, you know, what happens when you as a peer get old and can't do it anymore. And wait, can you get old? I don't know. A bit of a controversial topic. So I'm looking forward to hearing, uh, hearing her thoughts on that. Uh, and we'll see where that goes. Uh, the day after that will be the next episode of A Look Inside with uh, Is Gareth and Dame Elizabeth. Uh, Elizabeth, excuse me. Uh, talking about page schools. Page schools, for those who don't know, is the uh, sort of the royal university equivalency for the children. Um, a lot of kingdoms have them, um, and some of them use them better than others, in my opinion. So, looking forward to hearing their thoughts on that on April 25th at 7 p.m. Mountain, 8 Central Standard Time, um, and then. The next Road to Retention show will be the that's that following Sunday. Speaking of Duke James the Holy, uh, Ramut will be joined by him on 5-1 for an episode of Road to Retention. Uh, James is a great guy. really does a lot of, for the SCA and, and promoting the fun bits. Um, and uh, look forward to hearing what his retention thoughts are as the uh, punk rock king coming off of his reign. All right. Let's see. So... Um, other than that, look us up on Patreon if you want to join the Grand Wall of Patrons. We appreciate your support. Um, this supports not only stuff I do here on Cobbler's Corner, but also other channels that we've launched over the years. And uh, one we'll be launching soon. I'm actually meeting with another kingdom this week to help them with their streaming services. Um, and, and and what we've done here on Cobbler's Corner, KK Productions, has, has, has really launched streaming across the known world. And I want to thank all the, our, our patrons for that because... We, I could not have done it without you guys, and we could not have done what, we, what we're doing with live streaming in the kingdoms without y'all. So I appreciate you out there, and we will continue. My goal is can you help doing that for the kingdoms and helping where I can and where I'm needed. Um, and hopefully uh, the meeting we have Wednesday goes well, and we'll get to help another kingdom do a little, a little more with what they're doing. Actually, they're already doing some of it. We're just going to help them clean it up a little bit and uh, save them a little money. That's the goal. So. Uh, so you can check that out. Also check us out on uh, Redbubble, search KK Productions. Uh, and then take me out on TikTok, at Kyle Berger. Uh, send me questions on TikTok, send me questions on here. I enjoy uh, having things to do. Uh, TikTok's hard for me because I, I don't know what to talk about. I have trouble scheduling these shows sometimes. So ask me random questions, I'll happily uh, do them. Yes, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, suddenly I have, I have more ideas for shows. Um, I, my goal is never to do all the shows on here, uh, but uh, it seems like I keep coming up with ideas for shows. I keep trying, trying to pawn ideas off of people. Um, I'm still waiting for uh, Her Excellency Fia to do uh, Fia Says. So that hopefully that's coming soon as well. So if you're out there watching Fia. I remember. I remember. Our viewers remember. Pepperidge Farm remembers. All right. Let me share my screen real quick, and we'll do a little drawing here. I think we've got everybody in the bucket. So we'll do a thing. Let's share a Chrome tab. You want to do a coffee show? I, Fergus, I want, you, I want you to do a coffee show with me too. Uh, you got to tell me a topic, brother. You got to tell me what you want to talk about. I need you to pick a topic you're passionate about. We'll do a coffee show. All right. So we've got everybody on the list over here to the right. 
Let me share my screen. There it is. I, I shared it. Didn't actually share itself. I shared that. There we go. All right. You ready? Everybody ready? It's spinning. It looks like Lady Lowry, which I'm pretty sure means I, I, I'm now going to be mailing some stuff to Lokak. Uh, let, me, let me scroll back and find that person. All right, I will find it in a minute. So, Lady Lowry, if you're still watching, congratulations on that. You will be getting a bag of swag for, uh, for my birthday. Um, so, I'm looking forward to sending that over to you. Uh, I will reach out to you. How about this? Reach out to me on Facebook, because I think you're watching on YouTube. Reach out to me on Facebook, send me your address, things like that. Uh, and you'll be getting a bag of swag for me for my birthday. Uh, some of this, some bits I made. So there you go. Excellent. So uh, Tracy, if you will, ping me on Facebook. Send me a message on the on the, uh, on the the page you're on. Send a message to that page later, and I'll get your address for me. So thank you. All right. Uh, guys, this has been a pleasure tonight. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I appreciate you. Uh, Maybe I'll do some more crafty shows. Uh, this was kind of fun for me. Uh, I enjoyed uh, enjoyed doing crafty shows. Um, so I know, uh, speaking of crafty shows, uh, I know Safia's still out there watching. Hey, Safia, didn't you have an idea for a show too? Aren't you working on something? Okay. I'm just going to throw it out there for you. Just remember. Um, excellent, guys. Well, it's been a pleasure. Hold on. I got to. That is an empty cup. And as always, I love all of you. Keep watching. Keep tuning in. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow. If you're on Facebook, go to YouTube and subscribe over there, please. Helps with the metrics, things like that. And we appreciate always hanging out. But for now, this has been Cal in Cal Burge Corner. Have a good night, everybody.